Vercingetorix is in there with 18,000 of his men. It's the most invincible stronghold in Gaul. We'll never break it. Well, we won't have to break it. We build a wall around their city. We'll trap them inside and starve them. Nobody's ever built a fortification of that length. Then we will be the first. Let's not waste time. Cato, Pompey, Julia, what brings you to Pisa? I've come to speak with you. Your absence in Rome has been criticized. As you can see, my wife needs me here. Could we speak privately? What's the matter, Cato? Did your conversation depend on speaking ill of my father? Sit, sit, Cato. Thank you. Caesar is about to take the last stronghold in Gaul. Vercingetorix has called forth every tribe from the mountains to the sea. They're on the move to Elysia. How many men? Uh, 250,000. And my husband? 40,000. He will survive. He has survived these many years. He's never been up against so much. Is this true? Will my husband lose this time? Well, no one knows the outcome of war. Your consul, Pompey, do something. If Caesar wins this battle... He will become the next Sulla. That's what you were going to say, wasn't it? That if he wins, he will become the next Sulla. Why are you worried, Cato? You said he doesn't stand a chance against the Gauls. Why call him back? Why not just leave him there to fight this battle to his own death? If you leave him there, your next Sulla will extinguish himself. You're waiting for my husband to fail, aren't you? So are you. My dear Calpurnia, I'm doing everything in my power to make sure I come home safely to you. You must have heard we've built a wall to hold the Elysians in. What you may not know, is that we've built a second wall as well to keep their allies out. I say this to reassure you. They can round up 10 times our number and still we will defeat them because it's not numbers, but vision that wins wars. My vision is of returning to you, my love. And not just returning, but returning victorious as I've promised you. When my men are tired, I can't always let them rest. When they're hungry, I can't always feed them. But when they forget their vision, I can share mine with them. And the more of it I share, the more of it I have. It'll take 30 days to round up the tribes. How much food have you got? 27 days of grain. We'll make it last 35. We will divide rations. Have all the grain brought to the stores. On penalty of death, no one will eat beyond their measure. When the tribesmen come from the countryside to fight with us. The Gauls would outnumber the Romans five to one. If we succeed, we could destroy the Roman presence in Gaul forever. If we fail, we'll be their slaves.
In the evening, we take our leisure, tell stories about the city and our families, or just eat in silence after our hard day's work. The men do work hard, but there are worse things than hard labor. Waiting is much worse. Waiting is the hardest part of war, my dear wife. Most of our men would welcome the cry of battle over this dreaded silence and would fight an enemy we could see, however great, sooner than fight the one in our minds which goes on killing forever. The real enemy is almost a comfort, I sometimes think as I look up the hill to Elysia. They're just like us. They have courage like us. They're dying like us. The tribe should have been here by now. If they don't come, we'll have to fight on our own. You don't have enough men. I say we give ourselves up. And be Roman slaves? If we die, our gods die. At least if we live. In slavery? In any state. If we live, we can perform that service to the gods. We can keep them living for our children. You think the gods would want us to keep them alive so they can be worshipped by slaves? If we have nothing left to feed ourselves with, I say we do what our ancestors did. We eat the elderly and the infirm to keep ourselves alive. We won't eat our own people. There's enough food left for several days. If we only feed our men. There's a way we can compromise the Romans, weaken them. I say, we give up our women and children to them. Our rations will keep us alive for several more days. If our women and children become their slaves, the Romans will have to feed them, and that'll deplete their supplies. We must bid farewell to our families. We must do it today. And whatever happens, we must lock the gates behind them forever. Our survival depends upon it. This will be our sacrifice to the gods.
send men down to the gates. Bolt the gates. And double the guard. Caesar. I beg you to reconsider. They'll all die. I will not starve my own men to keep the enemy alive. Send them back to Alicia. This is not soup. This is water! We fight for years, and they give us water! We die for Rome, and we get water! What is the difference between the Romans and the Gauls? Discipline. We act as one body. That's what makes us strong. You think I eat well? Well, you starve. I eat the same portions as you. And I am hungry. But I would eat soil before I give up what we've come here to get. And that is everything you see. You. Where will you raise your family? On that hillside. Will that be a plot of land? You.